In today's video, I'm talking about the bravest money decision that I have made. I'm going to break down the five steps I took in order to make this brave money decision. So if you are struggling to make significant money decisions or be brave with money decisions, then today's video is for you. I am Tiffany Thomas, your wealth mentor. I achieved financial freedom in my 30s and became a millionaire at 40. I'm here to help you do that even earlier and easier and without bias since I do not work for any third parties. All right, let's dive in and talk about the bravest money decision that I have made. So the money decision that I want to share with you is that I was able to purchase my first property. I feel like this was a huge money decision that I had to make and it took some courage in order to do this. So the first step that I took was to have a long-term perspective. If I was buying my property and thinking, all right, I can sell this in two weeks and double my money and then get out. And then I don't have to worry about owning a property. I would be in big trouble because it did not double in value in two weeks. So I had that long-term perspective. I took a step back and thought, all right, if I buy this property, I know that it's in a good location, it's a good property, it will definitely go up in value over time, it will appreciate. And I know that I can collect cash flow from this property because I'm going to have roommates. So I took that long-term perspective and thought, okay, this seems like a lot of money right now and I know I'm going to be in debt in order to purchase this property but I feel like this is good debt because this is an investment for me because I was going to have roommates. So it would be making money for me. And I know that over time it is going to appreciate not only that, but rent prices will increase over time as well. So I will be collecting more and more money over the years as I own this property. By having that long-term perspective, I was able to settle my nerves a little bit and realize that things were going to be okay. That even if the market took a turn for the worse, right after purchasing this property, that I would be fine because my plan is to hold this property for the long term. So it makes a big difference when we are not so focused on the short term. What kind of return can I get tomorrow or even within a year? And we are focused more on that long-term knowing that it will bring us money. It will grow over time, over that long term. And then the second step that I took was to purchase a property that I could afford on my own. This also helped settle my nerves in case I couldn't find roommates and I had to pay for the property and the HOA, the pay for the mortgage payment and the insurance and taxes and the HOA and any expenses all on my own. I would still feel comfortable owning this property, knowing that I could do that, that I could pay for those things without having roommates. So that also brought comfort and helped me be able to move forward with purchasing this property. And looking back, Honestly, <laughs> it was pretty easy to find roommates and I'm sure this is not the case for everyone. And even though I found roommates at, at good rates, I wasn't super low on what I was charging for rent. I wasn't super high either. I was somewhere in the middle, but I was always able to find roommates and maybe it's, maybe your room was open for a month. Um, but it was never really a long time and I could even lower the price that I was charging for rent and collect half of what I was expecting to collect. So honestly, I don't, well, I only have one roommate now, but I don't worry about finding a roommate anymore. I know that I'm able to do that. I've been doing it for years and years and I have a process down and it works. But nonetheless, in the beginning, I was super nervous to purchase my property and I purchased it for a, around 130,000. And I know that does not sound like a lot of money now, but back in 2005, when I was 25 years old, 
that was a lot of money and uh, it was it was a significant amount that I was putting down as well and I was nervous about it I had never owned a property before and I was worried about a lot of different things right what if there was a fire or there was a flood right after I bought it and realizing you know that's why I have insurance that also helped calm my nerves but I was able to move forward um, because I felt comfortable affording this place on my own. And then the third step that I took was to get roommates. I knew that I wanted to have roommates and I was looking for a specific property that had three bedrooms, three baths, and ideally three and a half baths. And that's what I ended up purchasing. So I could have two roommates and we could all have our own bathrooms plus a little half bath for any guests that came over. I wanted to have roommates because I knew that I wanted my property to be an investment, be working for me. And I don't believe just buying a house is an investment because there is a lot of different costs that go into owning a home. And if there's not some way we are monetizing our home, then I'm not considering that an investment. So nonetheless, I wanted roommates in there. So that is the third step that I took. And by doing that, I was able to create cash flow. They were able to pay for, I can't remember in the beginning if they paid for all of my mortgage. I know not all of my expenses were covered because I still had the HOA payment and property and taxes insurance. But nonetheless, they were paying a significant amount of my expenses. So that made it a lot easier to purchase my home. And I know this may not be the case for everyone. Not everyone wants to have roommates in their home. But if there is some way that you can monetize your home, maybe you purchase a home with a mother-in-law basement apartment and then you can rent that out and create money from your home that way. Or if there is... Uh, garage space that you could rent out or turn your attic into an extra living space. I know that my sister and brother-in-law did this in their home. They honestly had their attic and they turned it into a little mother-in-law suite. So when my sister's in-laws come over, they can stay in their little mother-in-law suite. So it turned out fantastic. So think of different ways that you are able to monetize your house. You can even rent out space if you have an unfinished basement and rent it out as storage of space. I know someone that does that with her property. So there are different ways that you can monetize your home. And that is just one way that we can offset the cost of owning a home. And then the fourth item that helps me purchase my home that helped me make this big money decision was seeing other people be successful with real estate. I have a friend who is very successful with real estate. I consider him one of my mentors. And I was able to see how successful he was with his properties. He owned his own property and he had roommates in his place, or maybe one roommate, I can't remember at the time. But nonetheless, he was successful with that. And then he also had multiple properties, multiple other properties that he was renting out and he was able to make that work and create cash flow. So I was able to ask him a lot of questions about investing in real estate and seeing his success really helped me realize that I could also be successful with real estate. So find someone else that is doing what you want to be doing, ask them a lot of questions, even work with them and realize that you can also do this too. And of course, not everyone's situation is the same. So take the pieces that apply to you and realize that you can also be successful. And then the fifth item, and I think this one is the most important, and that is that I trusted myself. I trusted the decision I was making. I trusted that I could be successful with purchasing this property, that I could afford this and that I could make money from this property. And I did my homework and I prayed about it and I was able to trust myself, trust my own decisions. And this makes a really big difference because if we are 
relying on other people to make our decisions for us or tell us what is best, but we aren't actually trusting ourselves, then it is really, it's going to be really hard to make that decision and feel good about making that decision. So really trust yourself and have confidence in yourself that you are able to make good decisions. And once we feel comfortable, once we are trusting ourselves, then we are actually going to take the steps to make that decision work, right? So me being able to trust myself and realize that, yes, I can purchase a property, that I can be successful with this, then I was actually thinking, all right, what do I need to do to be successful with this? Well, I need to make sure and find roommates right? I need to post my ads. I need to tell people that I have rooms for rent and I need to be smart with my money and, you know, realize that I have a mortgage payment to make and I want to keep this property. So I'm going to make good decisions and know that I can always afford to make my mortgage payment. And that way, since I'm trusting myself, I'm taking those steps that help me create that proof or that belief that yes, I can be successful with this. And also I know that I will be guided to make good decisions along the way that will help this decision to be successful. These are the steps I took in order to make my bravest money decision. Comment below and let me know what your bravest money decision is. I'm curious to know. And if you do want help, with making these brave decisions and learning to invest your money and make it work for you, click the link below in the description and get the details on how you can work with me. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure and hit that subscribe button.